Okay, for the second lesson, we are gonna talk about how to add and subtract without a number line. Um, and then a little extra in it is, uh, is they are going to be uh, fractions that um, do not have a common denominator. All right? And we're actually gonna see some mixed numbers in there too that you guys have seen in elementary school. So uh, today, basically, bottom line is what you see. Adding, subtracting, mixed numbers is our lesson. Okay, so uh, we do have one vocab word, so go ahead and uh, if you haven't already done so, grab your binder, make sure you flip over to your notes section. All right, so uh, we should all see green on the left and notes on the right. And uh, I'll give you guys a few seconds to do that, but be doing that right now. Okay, so green on the left, notes on the right. There's actually only one uh, word today, and that word is unlike fractions. Unlike fractions, everyone? Okay, so uh, here's what the book says unlike fractions are. They are fractions with different denominators. That's what unlike fractions are. Okay, so like fractions have the same denominator, but unlike fractions have different denominators. Okay, so once we have that, let's uh, go ahead in our little box over to the side. Here's an example of unlike fractions. Three-fourths and one-sixth, okay? And notice you might want to circle them or underline them. The two bottom numbers of the fractions are both uh, bold just because it's just shown that they are different. All right, so, uh, so unlike fractions. Um, so go ahead and put your binder away. Go ahead and grab your book and flip over to page 303, 303. On page 303, 303, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, and actually, that's, that's what your homework is on. But uh, let's go ahead and look at page 302 for the problem that we're going to do together, together where you're going to put your notes. So take a look at page 302. Okay, and let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one. Okay, so what we have is we have eight and one half plus three and four fifths. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Step one, when we're solving problems like this, is we're gonna convert them actually to um, A over B form. And what that means is, I'm just using variables here to tell you, but that, all that means is a number over a number. Okay, so what I have here is, um, in this case, of course, it's converting a mixed number to what's more than likely gonna be an improper fraction. So if you don't remember how to do that, here's how you do it. You take the denominator, you multiply it with the whole number. So two times eight is 16. And then you add the numerator. So two times eight is 16 plus one is 17. So we have 17. And then our denominator right here is two. So we just keep the same denominator. So eight and a half is 17 halves, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish converting by converting this second mixed number here. So five times three is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. And again, we keep that same denominator from that fraction, and that is 5, so 19 fifths. Okay, now, that of course is our, it's the same problem, just looks different. Okay, but now what we're gonna do is, is step two is, anytime we're adding fractions, we're gonna go ahead and stack them up, and that's how we're gonna organize them. So we stack them up like this, 17 halves plus 19 fifths. We just put one on top of the other. Okay, and the reason is is because especially with unlike fractions, we need to find common denominators. So if we give ourselves room to the right, that's how we're going to show our work. It's just a way to stay organized. Okay, so step two is we stack them up. Step three is let's go ahead and find a common denominator. So the two denominators, two does not divide into five evenly. 
Um, I could find a least common multiple, but uh, because they're both single digits, I'm gonna go ahead and just multiply them together. So two times five is 10, and that gives us our new numerator, all right? So what we have is, is we have five times two is how we can get our 10 here. We do the same thing with the numerator, 19 times two. Now, some of us may be able to do that in our heads, um, but if we can't, it's okay to go over to the side, check it out, so nine times two is 18, two times one is two plus one is three, so 38. And we do the same thing here, two times five is how we got 10, or we can get 10, so we do the same thing to the numerator, 17 times five. And again, I could write it over on the side here, five times seven is 35, five times one is five plus three is eight, so it's 85. Okay, now after we have common denominators, we have a new problem. And again, it's the same problem, just looks different again, but now we have common denominators. So kind of like our lab, we know once we have common denominators, all we really have to do is just add the numerator and that will give us our new fraction. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. I'll put a little step forward by the addition sign here to remind us that we add. So remember when we have common denominators, our denominator to our answer is exactly the same. Now we just add 85 plus 38. You can go over to the side and stack them up, or if you can do it right here, five plus eight is 13. So I put down the three and carry the one. Then I say one plus eight is nine, nine plus this three here is 12. So 123 tenths, okay? Now you can do a couple of different things. Um, we do have to simplify it, all right, or reduce it. And that's what I'm gonna try to do. Um, sometimes it's actually easier to reduce if you change it to a mixed number first. Okay, so if I could do that if I want. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and remember changing to a mixed number, here's how you do it. You divide the bottom into the top. So 10 into 123. So I'm gonna not worry about the three, I'm just gonna divide the 10 into the 12, and I know that only goes once. So one times 10 is 10. When I subtract, I get 12 minus 10 is two, and bring down my three. And then 10 goes into 23 two times, because two times 10 is 20. Subtract, I get three. Now we have a remainder. Now with if we're putting it into a decimal, we put a decimal with a zero and bring it down, but we're not doing that. We're actually gonna leave it in fraction form. So here's what you do. No matter what, remember the denominator stays the same here. So you have this here, or you could just say the 10, the denominator stays the same, okay? Our remainder here, our three, is actually our numerator. Now, the reason why I say maybe we should change it to a mixed number is because now, all you have to do without looking at the 12, you just think, okay, can I reduce three tenths? And of course, I can reduce three by three, but I can't reduce 10 by three. And therefore, that is reduced, so this mixed number is reduced. So realistically, this could be your answer, 12 and 3 tenths. Or, you know, if you, it's actually okay in seventh grade to leave your answer as an improper fraction as well. So either one of those, they mean the same, either one of those can be a great answer. Okay, so just a quick little review. Step one, make sure that both of your fractions are in fraction form, a number over a number, not a mixed number, but just a number over a number. Step two is just rewrite them and stack them where we can show our work properly. Step three is if, of course, they're not like denominators, we need to find a common denominator. So that's what I did. Once I do that, step four is we add, and then step five is reduce. And if re the changing to a mixed number is not reducing, but if I change it to a mixed number again, it allowed reducing to be easier. And that way I found that I can't reduce, and so I have my answer. Either one of those would be okay. So here's the one I want you to try. Try page on your homework, page 303. Try problem number four. Problem number four. Okay, I'm actually gonna give you guys a little extra time for that since it'll probably take a little while and for adding and subtracting fractions do. So problem number four, go ahead and try that out on your own, go.
Okay, 30 seconds, go ahead and share with your neighbor, go. Okay, so on problem number four. Uh, problem four was nine and four fifths minus two and three tenths. So again, I'm gonna convert these both to being a number over number or an improper fraction. So five times nine is 45 plus four is 49 fifths. Keep the denominator the same. And 10 times 2 is uh, 20, plus 3 is 23. So we have 23 tenths. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and, of course, take these two, and I'm going to stack them on top of each other. So 49 fifths minus 23 tenths. Okay, they don't have common denominators, so I'm going to find a common denominator. And you know what? We're in luck. 5 goes into 10, so I can use 10 as my common denominator meaning that the 23 tenths stay the same. Five times two is 10, so 49 times two. Um, I can go over to the side or up here, 49 times two. And that's two times nine is 18. That's eight plus one, so we get 98 tenths. Now be careful, okay, because this is an addition, this is subtraction. So our denominator stays as 10, and 98 minus 23, so eight minus three is five, 9 minus 2 is 7, so we have 75 tenths. Now, you know what? The nice part of this is I can reduce this because I know that they end in a 0 and a 5. So I'm going to reduce both by 5. And so 10 divided by 5, that one's easy. It's 2. 75 divided by 5, mm, not exactly sure what that is, so I can do this. 5 goes into 7 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 and then bring our 5 down and I know 5 goes into 25 exactly 5 times. So we have 15 halves. And I could divide it by 2, This uh, the 2 by 2, but I can't divide 15 by 2. And that is a reduced answer. Okay. So, and that's actually okay. You can leave it like that or you can change it to a mixed number if you like, but 15 halves would be okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look back to uh, uh, page 302, and let's look at problem number three on 302. Problem number three, okay, on 302. So problem number three is 11 minus six and three eighths. Okay, so same exact steps. I just wanted to point this out to you guys, and that is the 11 becomes 11 over one when you change it to a, a mixed number, I'm sorry, an improper fraction. Okay, oops, that should be a minus sign. So we, we have here is we have now eight times six is 48, plus three is 51, so we have 51 eighths. Okay, stack them up. So we have 11 over one minus 51 eighths. And I know one goes into eight, so I can use eight as our common denominator. 51, 8 stays the same, 1 times 8, so 11 times 8 is 88. So from here, our denominator is, of course, 8. I'm now going to go ahead, it's subtraction again, so 8 minus 1 is 7, and 8 minus 5 is 3. If I start thinking here um, on reducing, 2 can go into eight, uh, 8, but 2 cannot go into 37 because it's an odd number. Um, I know that 4 can go into 8, but I also know that 4 times 9 is 36, not 37. So 4 can't go into 37. Um, and then 8, I know um, eight, times, uh, 8 times 4 is 36, so it can't go into 37 either. Um, and so because I can't think of any factors that go into both 8 and 37, that's reduced. So I've simplified. And there's our final answer. Okay. So 
With that said, let me go ahead and give you a problem on your homework, problem 300, I'm sorry, page 303, problem number nine. Number nine, try that, go. All right, 30 seconds. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and share. Go. All right, so if we go ahead and check our work, we go through the steps, number over a number, so eight over one minus, and then I have three times three is nine, plus two is 11, so 11, keep our denominator the same, 11 thirds. I'm gonna go ahead and stack them up, eight over one minus 11 over three, and again, denominator, one goes into three, so I can use three, as our common denominator. So that stays as 11 thirds. We now have one times three is three, so eight times three is 24. So when we do this, our denominator stays as three, and I subtract 24 minus 11. Again, guys, if you want to, you can come over to the side like that and do it here. So, or you could just say four minus one is three, and two minus one is one. Either way works. Okay, three is, prime, meaning only one in itself can go in, divide into it. So three can go into three, but three cannot go into 13. And that is our final answer. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and uh, I do want to take a look at just one problem just really quickly with you. Let's look at page, on page 302, number four. Okay, it is a word problem. Okay, and I just wanna, I, I, we're not gonna do this one together because the steps are the same. I just wanna go over on how to write this. So it says, read along with me, okay, uh, quietly. So it says, a hybrid's cars, I'm sorry, a hybrid car's gas tank can hold 11 and 9 tenths gallons of gasoline. It contains 8 and 3 fourths gallons of gasoline. How much more gasoline is needed to fill the tank? Okay, so. Um, you know, I mean, for those of you that struggle with word problems, you can just easily, you know, I'm going to like build like a gas tank uh, cylinder 
um, it's just saying it can hold this much, which is 11 and 9 tenths. It says it has in it this much is 8 and 3 fourths. So, of course, to find out how much this is, that's what it means by how much more gasoline can it hold, all you do is you take the 11 and 9 tenths and you subtract the 8 and 3 fourths from it and you will find out how much space is left. All right, so that's how you'll do a lot of your word problems on today's lesson. Okay, so you can uh, ask questions and then get started.